Hello, wonderful person. So what is this story about neutrinos, blazars, Antarctica? Some kind of a detection of something? Do you understand this? No? Well, let me try to explain it to you in about, I don't know, five minutes? Welcome to What The Math. And our story begins right here in a galaxy far, far away, something like 3.8 billion light years away, and also 3.8 years ago. Right in the middle, there is a supermassive black hole that is emitting tremendous amounts of energy, specifically gamma rays, but also produces things that are known as neutrinos. Now, neutrinos are types of particles, and these particles are actually everywhere. As a matter of fact, this star right here that you see produces tremendous amounts of neutrinos. Our sun produces enough neutrinos to cover a single square centimeter of Earth with like 65 billion of them per second. But the thing is, these neutrinos, or neutrinos in general, are really weird. Despite being super energetic and actually possessing quite a lot of energy to do some serious damage, they have a tendency to not interact with anything. As a matter of fact, they, for the most part, pass through the regular matter without really affecting anything. You currently are receiving a tremendous amount of neutrinos without feeling it at all. So, we don't really expect a lot of neutrinos to interact with matter and detect it. But it just so happens that we did it in July of 2018. And in case you were wondering what these neutrinos are, they're kind of related to electrons. And there's actually three types of them, or three flavors as they're known in science. And the specific flavor we actually were able to detect in July of 2018 is this one right here. It's called muon neutrino. And generally speaking, neutrinos can be produced in any nuclear reaction and can actually be detected from a lot of various sources such as supernova, black holes, uh, neutron stars, and also from our own sun. They're also produced when a cosmic ray enters our atmosphere and interacts with air, thus producing other neutrinos and electrons that can then be detected on Earth. But the neutrino we've detected that made a huge splash in 2018 was actually from a supermassive black hole in the middle of a very active galaxy. And this galaxy is known as a blazar. And to briefly explain what a blazar is, imagine a galaxy similar to our own Milky Way. A Milky Way like galaxy will often have two jet particles coming off two directions. One going this way, the other one going the other way. If you position yourself just so that you're actually staring directly at this jet particle, you'll be looking at what's known as a quasar. This is basically a galaxy whose jet stream you're looking at. But sometimes you're looking at it a little bit sideways, and it's not as powerful. We then call it a blazer. That's really all there is to it. And so imagine 3 point something billion years ago, a neutrino from this galaxy basically leaves and heads straight for Earth. Meanwhile, on Earth, scientists build a tremendously large neutrino detector underneath Antarctican ice. You can see it right here. This is basically a cubic kilometer of various detectors, and each sphere here is actually a really interesting uh, detector that basically looks like this. And there's like thousands and thousands of them inside, and each of them is responsible for detecting what's known as Cherenkov radiation. And to explain what Cherenkov radiation is, let's go back to Earth, and here is that neutrino approaching Earth, going through the ice, interacting with one of the particles of water, and basically suddenly changing to what's known as a muon neutrino, right now. It now will actually move really, really fast and produce this unusual blue glow. This is what we refer to as Cherenkov radiation. It's sort of like the sonic boom from moving faster than the speed of sound, except that this is reaction of moving faster than the speed of light, but not really the real speed of light. We're talking about the maximum speed of light inside the water, inside ice here. At this point, this particle is moving so fast that it's actually glowing with this radiation. This is something we've detected in nuclear reactors as well, so it, this is a very well-known phenomenon. And as this particle basically is producing Cherenkov radiation, um, all of these sensors detect it and then create a kind of a three-dimensional map of where this particle may have actually come from, which is where it gets really interesting. You can kind of see the line forming here, and if you uh, then draw back the line and try to see where it came from in space, you can actually estimate the origin of neutrinos. And using this detector, we can predict basically where the neutrino we detect came from, and then use other telescopes and other observations to even see if we can detect anything else. 
Now, in this case, uh, we were able to quickly detect the origin using other telescopes, using, for example, this right here, Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope, to uh, then see that it actually came from this location in space that we knew had a blazer in it. This blazer has a name. Uh, I believe the name is... TXS0506 plus 056, and this blazer has actually been now uh, detected to have increased in luminosity and in power. So something happened there billions of years ago that actually sent a neutrino to us. And following the initial observation, we then were able to detect it using other telescopes, other stations, which actually created this really cool phenomenon known as multi-messenger astronomy. So basically now we can use an initial neutrino observation to then pinpoint location of really, really crazy dramatic events that we would not be able to detect otherwise. Like for example, a supernova that's about to be extremely bright in the skies. But most importantly, we can use this really awesome technology to potentially create something even more great in the future. The fact that we were able to observe so many things all at once and so quickly actually creates an opportunity for really insane technology in the future. And honestly, this is exactly why the scientists were so excited about this successful detection. It's really not about this one neutrino that we detected, it's about the possibility of what could actually happen afterwards. Imagine the world where we can now use this technology for some really insane things that we can't even imagine just yet. Because don't forget, things like cell phones, GPS, and even the internet were all result of someone's initial research that people actually didn't really understand at first. So in the future, this could actually create incredible things. But for now though, that's really all we know about this neutrino and this detection, and hopefully in the future we'll be able to discover more things using these unusual and really cool sensors. And so hopefully now you kind of know a little bit more about blazers, neutrinos, uh, the detection of 2018, and what this old buzz in the science community is all about. It's really about the future possibilities. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe and click that bell button thingy as well. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. I guess the other question is, was it actually worth the money? They probably spent billions of dollars building those cubes and putting them into ice. How did they even fit them in there? It's pretty awesome. I gotta go try it myself. I'll see you guys later.